In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. It's my great pleasure to welcome all of you here tonight and watching online, and in a special way to welcome our own Archbishop of Ottawa, Marcel Damfus, who is the ordinary of our community, the Companions of the Cross. It's so good to have you with us here tonight, Your Grace. And uh, for all of you here for this Mass of, of lifetime commitment of two of our brothers, uh, we welcome you and we know that the Lord will bless us all tonight in a very special way through this liturgy. Thank you, Father Roger, and thank you for the invitation to be part of this a celebration tonight and also for tomorrow's ordination to the diaconate. Today the church celebrates the memorial of St. Cornelius and St. Cyprian, two martyrs of the third century. I'm sure September the 16th will be remembered in their lives in a special way for laying down their lives in such a way. I know September 16th means uh, something to me as well. In 1984, St. Pope John Paul II was touring Canada, and on the 16th, he stopped in Manitoba to celebrate Mass at Birds Hill Park, and that was my first time seeing a Pope in the flesh. So I remember that day in a special way, so I pray that both of you may remember this special day of your lifetime commitment um, to the Companions of the Cross, we pray that the, the martyrs that we celebrate tonight may be uh, patrons for you and how to lay down your own lives till the very end. So let us prepare our hearts to celebrate the sacred mysteries as we acknowledge our sins and call upon the gift of God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God, who gave St. Cornelius and Cyprian to your people as diligent shepherds and valiant martyrs, grant that through their intercession we may be strengthened in faith and constancy and spend ourselves without reserve for the unity of the Church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then neither has Christ been raised. 
And if Christ has not been raised, then empty too is our preaching, empty too our faith. Then we are also false witnesses to God, because we testified against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Show your wondrous mercies, O Savior of those who flee from their foes, to refuge at your right hand. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy shall be full. Hide me in the shadow of your wings, but I in justice shall behold your face. On waking, I shall be content in your presence. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. According to Luke. Jesus journeyed from one town and village to another, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Accompanying him were the twelve, and some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa. Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord 
So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and especially my dear brothers Kevin and Isaac, tonight we celebrate and witness you making your final lifetime commitment to the Companions of the Cross. And this is a very significant event in your life, and it is part of the twofold vocation that you've been called to, which we need to remember. As Companions of the Cross, you have been called to the priesthood, and tomorrow you will make that definitive step by promising celibacy and being ordained as transitional deacons. But tonight, you celebrate and we witness the other vocation that you've been called to, which is the vocation to membership and brotherhood in our community. It's the call to brotherhood. And this is what sets us apart from diocesan priests, is that we are not just called to the priesthood, we are also called to shared life together. And our threefold, well, there's a threefold nature to our call as well. There's the vision, the mission, and then the common life. And our vision, of course, is the vision that was given to Father Bob, the vision of a church becoming explosively alive as people experienced the grace of God's love poured out through the Holy Spirit. The mission is to evangelize so that people can have that encounter with God and be renewed in their faith. And then the common life that we are called to. So we have a common vision, we have a common mission, and we are called to a common life. And this is what's important for us to keep in mind, that our call to brotherhood is, is not secondary. It is co-equal to our call to the priesthood. Obviously, the dignity of the priesthood and the sacramental nature of that so far surpasses uh, our common life. But it is a twofold vocation that you have been discerning and journeying with us for many, many years. And the lifetime commitment is somewhat analogous to getting married, <laughs> making your vows for, for life, and to, to be faithful to, your, to our life together in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, till death uh, ends that part of our journey. <laughs> and Unlike with many couples, however, you've been discerning this for many, many years. And we have sometimes used the analogy of applicancy as a period of dating, you know? No commitments yet. We're just kind of checking one another out. And then the period of temporary membership that you've been making temporary promises now for several years is like an engagement. It's more serious. You are saying yes, but it's, it's not a definitive life long commitment yet. And now finally, this is the day where you are committing yourself to this vision that Father Bob gave to our community uh, and that, or was the Lord gave to our community, I should say. I was there 37 years ago, 1985, when we together discerned that God was calling us to be a brotherhood. Because we had been meeting and praying together, and it was so good to be in each other's presence and to share personally and to receive prayer uh, for one another. And because God had given us all a very strong sense of this vision of a church in need of renewal, but a vision that the Lord was and in fact wanted to more than ever pour out that renewal in the hearts of his people, in the hearts of the church. So that vision of renewal of a church becoming explosively alive, as, as we've been recently quoting Father Bob. And out of that, too, the, the strong sense of the mission Father Bob understood is that we have to proclaim the gospel 
in the power of the Spirit in such a way that people are able to make a response of faith, a personal response. And that's when the Holy Spirit goes to work and the grace then of conversion, of encounter takes place. We can't make it happen, but we are called to faithfully proclaim the gospel, which is what Jesus did and what he called his disciples to do as well. We see in today's gospel, the 12 who accompanied him, right? They were called to follow him, but then they were sent out on mission to the world. Go and proclaim the good news to all creation. And so again, but we do this as brothers. We do this in community. It's foundational to our, our, our vocation. It's, it's part of our charism. In fact, I've described it this way, is that we have a twofold charism as Companions of the Cross. The external charism, the apostolic charism, is evangelization or the new evangelization. But the internal charism, is our call to brotherhood and to shared life. And a charism means a, a gift, a grace that God gives to a community, but it also calls for a fidelity, that God will bless us as a community to the degree that we remain faithful to this twofold or uh, twofold charism. And so tonight, we emphasize that part of the charism which is the call to live as brothers which is again a way of supporting one another loving one another and we know that father Bob had a strong sense that priests need priests we need that daily support we need the daily encouragement and we need that daily accountability which our common life together is meant to uh, reflect and so this is and then in order of course to go forth and to proclaim the gospel to evangelize and so brothers I just thank you for your yes to the Lord and uh, oh yeah one little piece of trivia I just discovered uh, I was ordained 33 years ago and Kevin was at my ordination but he didn't have a very good view you know why? Because he was inside his mother's womb. His mother was pregnant with Kevin. <laughs> and she, it was a hot June 24th day. She was up in the uh, balcony. <laughs> I'd, I'd never heard that. They were parishioners at St. Mary's. I remember David and, and Cheryl very much, his parents. So I think that was a beautiful, and it, it just reminds me how old I'm getting. I'm just thinking, my gosh, you know, 33 years. Um, 30 years, 33 years from now, when you can celebrate 33 years of ordination and 33 years of lifetime membership, um, I might still be around if I live as long as the Queen lived, you know. I'll, I'll be in my mid-90s. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyways, um, it's been worth it. The journey is worth it. Uh, now, it includes, as the famous novel says, both the agony and the ecstasy. <laughs> And anybody who's been married will tell you that that's true about any vocation to shared life. It is a blessing. It is a tremendous gift. But it's also a call to lay down our lives, to die to self, and to learn to love even when it hurts. And so uh, I know, brothers, you've proven that over the years already through your temporary commitments. And now I look forward to welcoming you as lifetime members uh, of the Companions of the Cross. So without further ado now, I'm going to bless these crosses and we'll continue with the ceremony of permanent commitment. O Lord Jesus Christ, for by your cross you conquered the domain of sin and death and reconciled us to the Father. Let them be bulwarks of faith, encouragement to do good works. May they be consolations, protections, and shields against the darts of the enemy. 
May our brothers who will wear these crosses and who on this day commit themselves for life to our community receive generous grace from you, O Lord, to persevere until death and prosper in these commitments. May they become true companions of your holy cross, fully Catholic, imbued with evangelical hearts and filled with Pentecostal fire. Lord, through the prayers of your Holy Mother, the first companion of your cross, help them to spread your kingdom and bring you perfect glory. O Christ, crucified power and wisdom of God through your cross, may they triumph in this life and be received by you into the reward of life everlasting. You reign forever and ever. With those brothers who are to make their permanent, permanent commitments, please come forward. Kevin Darwin. I. I, Kevin Darwin, relying upon the grace of God, the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and the support of my brothers, freely promise before you, Father Roger Vandenacker, to follow the constitutions and rules of the Companions of the Cross for the rest of my life, for the greater glory of Christ and his Holy Cross. In the name of the Companions of the Cross, I receive your promise. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to completion. Isaac Longworth. I, Isaac Longworth, relying upon the grace of God, the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and the support of my brothers, freely promise before you, Father Roger Vandenacker, to follow the constitutions and rules of the Companions of the Cross for the rest of my life, for the greater glory of Christ and his holy cross. In the name of the companions of the cross, I receive your promise. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to completion.
Aye. Kevin Darwin. Aye. Isaac Long. With firm faith, believe and profess everything that is contained in the symbol of faith, namely, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With firm faith, I also believe everything contained in the word of God whether written or handed down in tradition, which the Church, either by a solemn judgment or by the ordinary and universal magisterium, sets forth to be believed as divinely revealed. I also firmly accept and hold each and every definitively proposed Church regarding teaching on faith and morals. Moreover, I adhere with religious submission of will and intellect to the teachings which either the Roman Pontiff or the College of Bishops enunciate when they exercise their authentic magisterium, even if they go, do not intend to proclaim these teachings by a definitive act. I, Kevin Darwin. In assuming the office of deacon, promise that in my words and in my actions, I shall always preserve the communion with the Catholic Church. With great care and fidelity, I shall carry out the duties incumbent on me toward the Church, both universal and particular, in which according to the provisions of the law, I have been called to exercise my service. In fulfilling the charge entrusted to me in the name of the Church, I shall hold fast the deposit of faith in its entirety. I shall faithfully hand it on and explain it, and I shall avoid any teachings contrary to it. I shall follow and foster the common discipline of the entire Church, and I shall maintain the observance of all ecclesial laws especially those contained in the Code of Canon Law. With Christian obedience, I shall follow what the bishops, as authentic doctors and teachers of the faith, declare, or what they, as those who govern the Church, establish. I shall also faithfully assist the diocesan bishops so that the apostolic activity exercised in the name and mandate of the Church may be carried out in communion with the Church. So help me God and God's holy gospels on which I place my hand. Church was formed from the side of Christ as he slept the sleep of death upon the cross. Through the sacrifice of Christ and gathered in the church as God's people, we confidently address our prayers to him. 
We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and the bishops under whom we serve, that they may be strengthened and encouraged in their ministry of Shepherd of Souls. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For the ongoing conversion of the Church, stronger fidelity to the Magisterium, greater love and devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, deeper openness to the work of the Holy Spirit, and increased reverence and desire for Jesus as he comes to us in the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the companions of the cross, that we will always strive by our life and ministry to exalt the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ and to proclaim Christ crucified, who is God's power and wisdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for our brothers Kevin and Isaac, who this day made their permanent commitment that they may persevere and prosper under the cross, the tree of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, the arms of Jesus stretch out from the cross, the sign and instrument of our salvation. Through the cross, Jesus and we with him triumph over all that oppresses the human spirit. Strengthened and nourished by the cross, we rejoice. Through Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we commit these intentions in our very lives to you, who live and reign with your Son and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Alphatrice hymn is 170, King of My Heart, 170.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings of your people in honor of the passion of your holy martyrs, Saints Cornelius and Cyprian, and may the gifts that gave them courage under persecution make us to steadfast in all trials. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, Cornelius and Cyprian, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, in giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and all the saints in this constant intercession in your presence, we rely on our family. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop, his auxiliary bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
And let us pray. Through these mysteries which we have received, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that by the example of the martyrs, Saints Cornelius and Cyprian, we may be strengthened with the fortitude of your spirit to bear witness to the truth of the gospel through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Be to God. The recessional hymn is number 233, 233. <laughs> At present, we have seen the growth in our community to the point now we have 38 priests and two bishops, men who have been pulled out of our community because they've been appointed as bishops, which is an incredible affirmation. And we have currently 20 seminarians. What we've noticed every year is the vast majority of our, our financial donations and resources are going to the training, the education, the formation, the housing of our seminarians because the Lord is giving us men. He's sending us men. 
So that's, uh, that to me is so hopeful to see the kind of vocations that God is bringing to us every year. It really draws young men to our community because they see a community that's flourishing, that's thriving. There's something special about us in a sense and that really draws young men and so in a sense it makes my life much easier as vocation director because there's something there that they're, they're drawn to. I don't, have, I don't have to create something, they're, they're drawn to the charism of the companions. When I think of future ministry, I think of renewal, I think of revival, I think of healing, I think of transformation. I just, I just want to see what I've already seen God do in my life and in my, in my ministry now. It's transforming the heart of men, transforming the hearts of families, bringing not just conversion to, to, to the Catholic faith, but bringing healing to the world. And that's what I think of when I, when I think of my life in the future and what I'm gonna be doing for the rest of my life. I remember this one day, I was really struggling with whether or not I should leave seminary because I was wrestling with this thought that I am just not worthy of becoming a priest. Like who am I, Isaac, to think that I can become one of God's priests, like the audacity of it, it kind of scared me. And as I was reading in the Bible later in that prayer time, there was this scene of this priest who was brought into God's presence in a, in a vision, and he was covered in these filthy rags. And the devil was standing beside this priest, accusing him before God, you know, accusing him because those rags represented his sins. But the but then God basically rebukes the devil and sends the devil like, get out of here. And an angel comes and dresses this man in priestly robes and he puts the priestly clothing on him. And I was just crying in the chapel because the Lord was showing me that I had given him permission to do whatever he wanted to do with my life, like Father Bob told me to do. And he was going to supply all of the grace that I needed to be able to become the priest that he wanted me to be. I did a, an internship at St. Benedict Parish out in Halifax. Um, that for me is probably the closest example of an explosively alive church that I've seen thus far. People there are having powerful experiences. People there are, are going to church, not because they have to, not because um, it's, what, it's what they knew growing up, but they're there for, for a very personal reason. Uh, they've encountered the Lord and they come to encounter the Lord ongoingly. I, I think there are some some people out there in the church, maybe even some of the leaders in the church who probably think this isn't possible. You know, we're just gonna stay where we're at and, and maintain it. I live with the guys who are on fire for this, who want this to, to actually happen, who are, who are gonna put their lives down for this to happen. I think that's, that's the foundation of my hope that when, once we become priests, we're going out there and we're gonna do all we can to make it happen. Just as Father Bob was able to fill the church to capacity, by surrendering to God, by leaving everything into His hands. I desire to bring the same thing, to bring the spirit of Father Bob back, and back not only in one church, but in many churches, in all the churches in the world. I desire to have the spirit of Father Bob so we can achieve the great vision that he had for the church, that he still has for the church, that I have for the church.